Hey guys, it's The Shades once again here at Metricon 2014 for RBTEntertainment.com and I am sitting here with the beautifully talented Miss Brittany Karabowski. Hi Brittany. guys. How are we doing Brittany? Hey, how are you? Doing all right. So now first things first I have to ask, I heard uh, you got an uh, expe expectation on the way. Oh yes, I am expecting a baby. She's due October 14th and her name is going to be Edith Marie. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, Congratulations you. to you. Thank you very much. We're excited. <laughs> We, we, I've been getting into fairy tale lately. Oh, Great, yeah. fa it's fantastic! Good. Oh, it's fantastic! Oh, I love that show. And yeah. I know you're doing the voice of a little Wendy, the, Wendy. Uh, 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 right oh, now. Wendy, uh, that's what they say in Japanese. Yeah. Wendy, uh, Wendy, uh, uh, Wendy. What was uh, now? I noticed I when I listened to it, it sounded like you used kind of like your natural voice for that one. Is that sound about right? Um, not exactly my natural voice. I do like pitch it up a little bit. Right. Um, I probably like you know. Sky Dragon, so it's a little higher than my normal voice, but right. it's just a little bit more like nasally and childish. But yeah, it's similar to my normal. Voice. Yeah, it's a very close. To, I remember hearing a couple trailers for, seeing a couple trailers for. I haven't had a chance to catch up on the, on the dub of it yet. Like I'm still, I think I caught up what was ever on Netflix at the time. It's yeah. crazy. Is there any particular role that you've ever wanted to do? You know, even if it's not like you know stage acting, voice acting, or anything that you've never had a chance to. Um, I mean. I, that's the beauty of voice acting is that you get to do a lot of roles that you wouldn't like normally be able to do like I normally couldn't play in live action I'm not gonna be able to play you know a boy or a little girl because I'm not that but in you know voice acting gives you the freedom to do that um, but the thing is is that I would love to work any any role mm. and there's not like a, a specific like I want to be in this I would do anything because I love doing what I do and I love my job and every time that I get a role I feel blessed with that role and thankful and so yeah, I mean, of course, the answer to that is yes, everything. <laughs> yes. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, as long as it pays, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Has there ever been a role that because of any reason at all, you know, but, you know, time or just something or other, you just had, there was a role that you had to turn down and that you wish you didn't have to? Um, I don't usually, I'm not uh, accustomed to turning down roles. Mm -hmm. That isn't something that I've had to do so far. Um, there are times, like, you know, when I, I broke my neck during when we were recording Soul Eater, and so, mm. but, um, and if Funimation at that point, if they did need to recast the role, I wouldn't, I would have been understanding because I was in the hospital and I was out for eight weeks because I couldn't, you know, I, I think it was about six weeks because I couldn't travel. Um, but at the same time, they were really awesome, and they waited, and uh, Sentai and Seraphim waited for me to come back and finish out my roles, and they actually waited a couple months so I could come back and do them, so I haven't had to. Um, but if I ended up turning down a role, it would be that I literally had to, because I don't do, yeah. I will drive up for the smallest role because I just, like I said, I really enjoy what I do. Yeah, that's kind of why I asked it like that, because I know not, nobody likes to turn down a role. Nobody no. wants to turn down a role. And I, I'm glad you did stay as Black Star, because when I, I when I actually reviewed that series, I did say that your voice was, you know, it was, how do I, how did I put it? I know I said it wasn't annoying, but it oh, was it like, it was over the top, bit. but it was never annoyingly so. And it was, oh. that, it, it's, it, you walked well, a fine you. line, trust yeah, me. Yeah, it's supposed to be, I mean, he is supposed to be annoying. That's why you love him. Exactly. But so he, he's you, obnoxious you, and annoying and arrogant. That's but you, great. You did it enough that it didn't, you know, it made me want to keep watching him. And, uh -huh. and, it, and especially when he started flipping the switch and turned into a badass. Well, thank you. That's <laughs> an awesome compliment. But he is, he is pretty much badass. He, so. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did, this little, I did a little research and I noticed that you did like this little low budget production called Up and Down. You remember that? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I actually looked that up. What was it like working on that? It was that that was my first uh, film that I had ever done and uh, it was wonderful. It was a great experience. The whole thing was done in one building and one elevator and uh, it was it was great. It was it actually it ended up being a really great movie on a really low budget. Everybody was wonderful to work with. It was a really good learning experience and uh, I, I would do it again. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely, yeah. I, I saw that. I mean, it looks interesting. I'm not one for like romantic stories like that, but at the same time, it looked like there was a lot of good acting. It was involved sweet, on that. and yes, the actors were very good. That's always yeah. good to hear. No, I'm not. I'm not saying <laughs> myself. I'm not talking about how great I was. No, but everyone else. I'm right. saying yeah. The, the, the actors on that show were, were fantastic. And that's what it looked like to and me. And the director was, and the producer was, and it was <laughs> wonderful. Have you ever had any odd or funny convention moments that you could share with us? Um, you know, and everybody always wants to hear the bad. You know, the bad stories or the ones that are horrible. <laughs> Uh, but for every like one that you have like that, you have a million 
really wonderful experiences. Right. I think that conventions are a wonderful place because you can meet, you can feel free to be as dorky as you want to be, and everybody has a little bit of dork in them. <laughs> and uh, nobody's going to judge you for it or, oh, well, that's not cool. You can just be who you want to be here. And everybody's happy to be here. Um, everybody's always smiling and positive and helping each other out. It's, you know, it's not like high school where everybody's, you know, hating on you or, you know, haters gonna hate. No, it's not like that here. Mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. It's a great place to be. You meet some of your uh, closest friends. I, through cons, have met some of my closest friends, people that were at my wedding, um, people that I call family. Um, and, and so just even being able to go to any of these cons is a wonderful, beautiful experience. And yes, every now and then you'll have these like hilarious things, you know, where the, you know, I've told stories of me and Greg and an elevator and this guy wanted to do the trench coat thing. And I think he thought he was going to get a shock, but instead I laughed at him. <laughs> I think I scared him more than he was actually scared. I've heard me. you tell that story. I, I was like, <laughs> and I asked him if it was cold. <laughs> and uh, that happened. That was it, you know. But it, but it was like that. But then, you know, like there's those negative experiences. But I'm kind of hard to shock. Uh, I think people think they can shock me. Like, oh, she looks so cute. She plays Wendy. I bet she acts like that. But that's not. <laughs> that um, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, and uh, but I've you know, and I've had crazy con stories, and I've signed crazy things, signed people's chests and heads, and someone seriously asked me to sign their baby's arm one day, and I was like, no, I'm not going to sign your baby. That's <laughs> really messed up. And uh, I was like, I will sign something for your baby that you could give your baby later, but I'm not putting a marker on your child. Um, I, but I've signed Xboxes and violins and underwear. I've probably signed a lot of underwear, actually. Clean underwear. They're in packages. That right. People are always courteous enough to bring it in a package, because if it wasn't, I would be like, you know, I don't, I don't really want to touch it. Hold no. on, do you have gloves? <laughs> and then I would probably still sign it. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you give me gloves, I'll, I'll pretty much do it. Um, but yeah, I think I, in general, I'm, I, uh, a lot of the shocking horror stories, I don't really I have a lot of them, and I don't really like, I don't even take the time to remember them because I have such good experiences at cons. I feel like I would rather just like gather up all of those and remember those. If I, if I only have like a certain amount of space in the room or in the file cabinet, so to say, upstairs, for you know my memories, I would rather remember how wonderful it is and all of the friends that I've made. I have friends from all over the United States because of these cons, and um, it's just a wonderful place to be. Uh, is there anything else that we could expect from you as we head towards the future? Uh, let's see. So I know that it's now announced there is um, a Railgun season two mm. will be um, being recorded in such shortly. Um, so it'll be a while till it's like out, but it, but it is licensed and all that fun stuff by Funimation. That'll be really great. Um, I have, let me see. You know, I, I always try to think of these things and my brain just goes mush. <laughs> um, but because I'm doing a lot. I'm pro okay, I think uh, Tokyo Market. Uh, just came out, or Tom Tomiko Market, jeez, Tokyo Market, sorry, uh, pregnancy brain is real, um, t Tomiko Market, uh, and um, uh, I'm forgetting things, I've done so many of them, and I should know, but I don't, and when Wendy is always being recorded, yeah. um, constantly, fairy tale, yeah, fairy tale, real gun, there's all these second seasons of things that are coming up that I pretty much figure that I most likely will be in, so, um, but yeah, it's, it's hard for me to remember right off the top of my head, but there's definitely a lot of projects, but you never know what's been released. And if I'm gonna let go of something that I shouldn't have said, oh, Senran Kagura recently came out. You can, mm. you can definitely check that one out. It's hilarious. It's, I've heard a lot about that one. Yeah. I have to give a spoiler because it has nothing to do with the show. There's a part where I take down a polar bear in like an arm bar. Doesn't have anything to do with the show. It's literally like during a montage and it's for five seconds and it's totally random. And I make the polar bear tell me that the polar bear is my bee, and it's really hilarious. Okay, you have now officially put that on my to-be watch so list. It's so funny. It's so <laughs> random. It's, it has nothing to do with the whole show. It's just this most random moment ever. It's just this like like alligator, you know. And it was like what? I don't, it's hilarious. <laughs> It's really great. That's going to be interesting. Well, yeah. Brittany, thank you so much for joining this thank series. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Yeah, and, thanks, guys. And you guys stay tuned for more here at MetroCon 2014. And until next time, I'm The Shades, and we'll see you then. <laughs> Rock on!